What's up? Welcome to our headquarters here at Huntington, New York for Solo Sports. We're excited to bring you this review of the Dunlop CX200 Tour 1820. There's a lot going on there, but we're going to put it on the stringing machine, set it up, get it on court, full review coming at you. We chose to string up this racket with Technofiber Red Code at 54 pounds. This co-polyester is a great choice for the racket with flexible polyester granules to soften the racket, Thermacore technology to maintain the tension over time, keeping the control, and of course, the stylish red string to match the cosmetic. Dunlop returns in 2024 with its third iteration of the CX200 Tour 18x20 racket. This racket features a small 95 square inch head and a heavy unstrung weight of 315 grams equaling 11.1 ounces. The swing weight is 315, putting the balance point at the 12.6 inch mark, making it seven points head light. It is a standard 27 inches long on the new beam shape, which is 20.5 millimeters. It has a dense string pattern of 18 mains and 20 crosses and a firm stiffness of 66. Combine that with the beautiful stock Dunlop leather grip and a new color cosmetic with red, black, and some coral to bright red pops. I hate to say it, but when I think of Dunlop rackets, I don't necessarily think of flashy cosmetics or a design that I love. But with this new model, I'm really enjoying and thinking they did a fantastic job with the color, the contrast, the feel, everything. What do you guys think of this racket? Do you think they knocked it out of the park? Let us know in the comments below. Or is there a racket from Dunlop that you think they've done better? Maybe it was their m -fill. Maybe it was one of their 200s or 300s back in the day. But something about this fluo red, this coral, this salmon with a nice dark matte red looks really exceptional to me. The 1820 pattern on this racket is quite rare and the small 95 square inch head size is almost non-existent in the racket world. And now the heavy 315 gram unstrung weight makes this racket an absolute anomaly and pertains to such a small piece of the audience and a small population of players. So when you're seeing that review score at the end of this video, don't let a low score deter you. That's just simply stating that this very unique racket is particular to a small group of players versus the mass population. To say this is a control racket might be an understatement. I thought it was razor precise and the most control out of any racket I've ever play tested. The only thing I might say is that it has too much control. Some of the shots that I was hitting from the ground strokes were landing short. Most of my misses were into the net. Almost never did I hit anything long or deep or out of control and it just had so much tame, so much power absorption and so much control on this racket that unless you have the most outrageous and massive strokes, very few are gonna find use for something so tame. I had the privilege of playing the 200 Tour 1820 and the 200 Tour side by side. And my warning for any of you watching is that although the specs on paper or on the internet look so close, similar head sizes, just that five gram difference in weight and the difference in string pattern, there is a night and day difference between how the rackets play. The 1820 racket was very difficult to play. The points were short. Hitting the sweet spot was difficult. And although the head size remains the same on the 200 Tour, I just found my success rate much higher. I could swing generously and the racket was helping me with some of the work. I was a big fan of this racket on the serve. The heavy racket created heavy serves, created heavy ground strokes, created heavy volleys. Everything just had so much force. I felt like my arm was moving in slow motion, but when it connected with that ball, it was explosive, 
powerful and had a lot of heavy power on the serve. I could place it, accelerate it, and kick it. Definitely, if you're a player that does a lot of match play or uses your serve as a weapon, if you can handle a racket like this, this is gonna do wonders for that serve and that hold game. The continuing theme with this racket is absolute control. I noticed it at the net as well, and on my volleys, I was able to hit and place the ball anywhere I wanted without overhitting. I was even able to block shots at the body or with very little swings create quality volleys because the racket is so stable and so heavy. The sweet spot made it difficult to hit some shots, but if you were able to hit that sweet spot, the result was perfect, the control was there, and you can really put the ball anywhere you want. The racket received a low overall score, but skewed with some of the highest scores for control in the Solo Sports graded review. If you want the utmost control and seek just about nothing else with classic to Eastern continental grip styles, then this is your all-court weapon. There are very few similar racket options, but they include the Babolat Pure Strike 97, Head Prestige Classic, or Yonix Percept 97D. But to be honest, these are substitutes and they only have one or two of the key qualities and not all of them. So immense talent is welcome, and for the others, possible pain. I just wish I was better to use this racket myself. Playing your best tennis is all about taking the perfect model from all of the choices and matching it specifically to how you play. So be sure to check out some of our videos here and here, which break them down and help you match yourself to the best equipment.